Hello everybody, um, I didn't know whether I'd do this or not, but basically because of what's happening, I don't think we're allowed to mention the word, but um, because of what's happening, we're we're on lockdown here in Spain for a couple of weeks, um, and I just wanted to, I don't know, maybe recap on some things that I've already mentioned and some things that I forgot about the other day while I did, uh, did a bit of a review while I was out on the fly. Um, set it up so you've got more pictures of the bike or more footage of the bike and less footage of me I've got a couple of on-road bits of footage now I've tried to um, I've tried to edit them um, as I said I'd have to do everything on my phone um, I don't know maybe I can find a better app or whatever but uh, the important thing is that I uh, hope you guys are all safe out there because this is uh, this is scary as I say we're locked down here in uh, in Spain for two weeks um, the last video or one of the on-road videos that I do which I took on um, Saturday that was the last time I took the bike out um, which obviously there's there's bigger problems in the world at the minute and not being able to get out on your bike so the company I work for they're not they they've told us all to stay at home um, I've got two kids at home and a pregnant missus as well so uh, we're just playing musical rooms at the minute, just trying not to get under each other's feet and drop and, uh, and have any arguments. Anybody with kids out there knows it's not easy to keep them entertained. Thank God we've still got the internet. Um, I've also got my notes here beside me, so I'm, I'm having a, I've had a quick look over them, the notes that I was originally going to do for my, uh, for my update. Um, but I did cover most of the things. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I was saying about the dash, uh, although I didn't mention the dash on it is is beautiful, fantastic, looks cool, excellent. Trouble is on the street triple you can and a lot of the other bikes you know you can angle it, whereas with this it's pretty flat, so it's not the easiest to see. But let's be honest, you, you don't spend all your time looking at the dash. But um, but if it had a little bit more of a tilt adjustment on it, it would have been handier. Um, let's have a look, see, check through my notes, see what else I've got here. Brakes. Uh, we all know what the Brembo is. It's the limiters that are on this one. Uh, brilliant. One finger. No fade. Um, again, it's typical. Obviously, we've got some people out on, on the road, but it's uh, they've got to be licensed. But uh, anyway, I don't even. I'm not even going to bother cut that out. Um, it take me longer. Having a look here. So back to the brakes again. Um, one finger. That's all. That's all I need. One finger, two max, if I'm really holding it down. But again, you'll notice from the videos, 50% of my riding is downhill, with all the weight of the bike, all the weight of me on top of it. Uh, yeah, it does get a bit risky, as mentioned before. Um, but I don't. Uh, well, I don't know. You know, I don't know many people. Most of us would prefer to be riding uphill with twisties rather than downhill. Um, but. Uh, I've had the odd squeak at the end of the day, but again, it's nothing. It's just a little bit of a squeak, and then that will go away. But I didn't used to get that on the M50s on the with the RS, so you know. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, God knows. But you know, God knows when we're going to be allowed out. God knows when we're going to be able to track it now. Um, everything's on hold. Um, suspension. I did mention we all have a fiddle, so. Uh, and we all buy the bikes with all this fully adjustable stuff and we can't resist it because that's why it's there so we want to have a little fiddle with that suspension so we all go out with the allen keys c spanners um, and uh, read the advice in all the magazines get the missus there with a the tape measure you know checking your static sag and um, whatever else make sure you've got 30 mil of travel in the back and everything and then um, and we all think we're experts and I've done it at my ZX7R and, and I remember reading every article and this was like 20 years ago you go at the same piece of road they tell you to set it up on because then you'll be able to feel the difference and as we know I mean 20 years ago standard suspension um, what is it K KYB forks I think we're on that and uh, like a shower rear shot and the whole range of adjustment was pretty much nothing uh, but anyway I was convinced I was convinced that I was a suspension guru and um, and some years later, we're probably looking, probably talking like 15 years later. I went to Snetterton for a track day on it, and uh, I had a professional setup, 
in between sessions and looking at the amount that uh, you know where the preload settings was and I was miles out miles and miles and miles um, and really even with that, that range of adjustment it, it did feel it if anything it felt not at soft that a bit in a nice way because the ZX7 R's are always a bit well always hard, hard just uh, hardly sprung or stiffly sprung suspension anyway so um, moving on to this now I've got the trusty 3mm allen key here I'm hoping I'm still in the shot 3mm allen key and because I'd already had a fiddle and I do make notes with the um, the Street Triple RS I, I religiously I kept the notes and a little pencil in my pocket you know and um, as I said to you I think the preload I changed that by about 10mm made it about 10mm harder oh here comes another lorry now here we go I think it's the same guy just going round and round. Um, yeah, for the preload, so I, sh I strengthened that up and put another 10 mil, I think it was, on it, just to t uh, just to raise the back up a little bit. And the front was easy because it was the it's the big piston forks, so that's done on an key, and I didn't know what I was doing, so I just put another couple of clicks, mainly down to my weight, because after reading again, reading, reading, reading. Um, all the reviews and everything else so they're always set up for a lighter rider apparently so the reason I got the Allen key is because I did a couple of I clicked it back I think one notch from being um, from the factory sports setting so that was soft and then um, I thought well I'll just try something different so I went four notches so or four clicks so what I'm going to do I'm just going to have a go now and we're going to count them in and back out again all right so I'll have to concentrate on this because I don't want to cock it up. We're going to do the front ones first with the Allen key, and then I'll do the rear ones on the clicks because they're they're just easier. All right, so let's have a look. So this is rebound. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 19, there's 19 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That seems a lot to me. Does it seem a lot to you? Right, let's see what the compression's done. Winding it in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's 21. Out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Alright, so that's the 21. Um, I'm just going to do the clicks on the back. Um, which is just little wheels which before I sign off the video I'll just have one more walk around the bike so you can have a look at it so push me up so this is rebound first one, two, three, four, Same with the compression, that's the gold knob at the top. So that's the 20. Now, the difference that it made, and again, I'm not sure whether I'm keeping it shot here, but um, never mind, you can look at the bike, that's the main thing. Um, but the difference that it made, uh, when I said 
uh, on the last review I said when it gets a bit softer uh, or rather when the oil warms up a little bit and normally I can feel it getting softer towards the end of a, a decent ride um, which are like never the, the, the oil never really has a chance to cool down apart from when I stop for a coffee or whatever but uh, it's pretty much sort of full on and uh, that the suspension's just just working all the time when I'm out for a ride and um, so it never really does get a chance to cool down so um, and it's working pretty hard but uh, with those extra clicks I've taken off I know I should have uh, I should have actually made a note what the standard word ones were but you can find that on on the internet and um, the, the setup of, on the normal Daytona um, Daytona R um, handbook settings because the handbook is pretty much the same as the Daytona 675R but um, but it did make a difference and it did feel a lot more compliant and I don't think it was placebo and in my head because I'd had a fiddle and um, I'm pretty sure it was you know it was because of the extra four clicks and it was a, it's quite extreme because as I say about the Odin's it does make a difference you know it's um, it's good stuff you know it's not just clicking away and nothing's happening but uh, I didn't have so much pain on my wrist uh, at the end of the day and when you look at the on-road shots look at, uh, particularly when the GoPro's on the side of the fairing mounted on the side of the fairing look at the the state and cragginess of the tarmac that I was on um, and it, and the ride was just plush I think would be the right word for it but still compliant you know um, no problem whatsoever it, took, it, it, it was it was probably the best the best it's felt I think so anyway I'll put that down as a win at the minute and like an idiot I didn't actually I'll have to look back at the video and make notes again because I can't remember what, what it said but anyway um, let's have a look see what else I've got here so that was the dash thing brakes we covered suspension um, uh, yeah I, I think I, actually I covered I did pretty well I covered quite a lot um, and what I wanted to do and oh see Se seems like a bit of a, a strange thing to make a point on no, I said about the finish of it weren't great but greatly impressed of but anyway look by the by but the seat is is really comfy plenty of room when you slide back as I mentioned in the other video it's the same guy is this is this deja vu a bit more scary now isn't it? Can't be lost. Anyway, um yeah the seat so yeah it's comfy uh, and just comfy and the knee position I spoke about that as well really could do with grips on the tank. It's my own fault, bloody vanity because I don't I, I don't want to cover the paintwork. The ones I've looked at cover the paintwork and uh, yeah I should do really um because again that I know that'll make a lot of difference with the um with the comfort long term. So I'll have to bite the bullet and cover up this lovely little bit of graphic here, I think. You know, if I can get something around this way in um, in clear. Um, ah, here we go. There's one there that's showing out on me. Quick shifter. Quick shifter, quick shifter. I, it was better because, again, I'm doing a bit, did a bit more homework on it. Um, but I can't tell you whether it's better throttle closed or on a on a constant throttle um, a higher revs lower revs I, I don't know because I, you know I'm, I'm not paying that much attention to it because of course usually when you're using a quick shifter and um, going up is perfect and never had a problem with that never had a problem with the other one but then like I said I never used the clutch anyway and um, in the past I've always done clutches up shifts and you know rolled off the throttle I've always been doing that but it was the the downshift on the blipper, and when you got a blipper, and you you know, and you know it's a nice piece of equipment, and you're expecting big things, and probably I was expecting too much of it. Um, but it was still bulking, but not as much. So again, I don't know. Update on the radiator. Triumph have got the new radiator in, or rather, they've told me that it's in. But Triumph, due to the problems, have also closed the doors and the, the local dealer has, uh, has shut down for the safety of all. So, um, so I'll not be hearing anything else, of course, about that. I wouldn't have thought for at least another two or three weeks. Depends on how long we remain on lockdown. Um, so the quick shifter, yeah, I, I, 
don't know. It, it's not expected to be intuitive and and just you know like six cents and just work, uh, but it it didn't. Um, so I'll I'll keep persevering with that. Uh, I don't want to muck about with anything adjustments or anything else on it, even if I've got adjustment on it, because uh, I don't know what I'm doing with that. So I'm, I'm just going to have to keep on going. The modes, the modes for uh, that you got, you know, the the rain, sport, and um, track, blah blah blah. Uh, here, fortunately, don't need rain, um, and um, I just use the sport, which is the wiggly road one. I use sport for most of the time, and then I, now and again I might use rider, um, but not, you know, not really. Uh, that turns the traction control off. You can get the front wheel up if um, easier because because the weight's far far forward. The traction control will cut in, and um, you know if you if you dump the clutch or whatever most of the time, and it will just hold it hold it back. So somebody with a lot more skill and good technique could ride around that. But I say don't need the track mode yet. I did use it on the RS when I was on track, and that was great. Um, and you could you, you can kind of feel it locking up when you lock down the the gears, but it then the slip of clutch slipped, you know, and then it slipped in and um, really good. Even my ham fisted sort of braking for the turns and stuff on the track here at the Maspalomas track um, still worked well. So anyway, I think time's ticking on, and uh, I don't want to bore the pants off you. So let's have a look. I'll just have a look, see if I've got anything else that I've completely forgotten about. No, I think that's about it really. So what I'll do is I'll just run the camera around the bike. The sun's out and as I say, it's really sad. Can't be selfish and think I wish I was out there because that's obvious. But everybody stay safe. Let's have a little last look around the bike. I think I'm at 2,000 whatever kilometers. I don't know, switch it on. Let's see how it goes. The can's definitely sounding a bit more fruity as well. Our oh, chain wise, obviously, chain maintenance really important. I'm really paranoid about chains, um, and uh, always make sure I always clean them and and uh, re lube them around about every. Oh, I don't know, probably, probably every week. No, say every two weeks, probably on on average. So I've used different ones with the street triple as well. I used the like the um, you know the white sort of ceramic one, which is really impressive. It really stayed on the bike well. But at the minute I've got a Motol clean one uh, or clear one, sorry, which is on at the minute. But here, not so much problem with the with the wet rushing it, rushing off, um, uh, washing it off. Um, quick shout to Pete. In, in England, just had his Moto2 service, done nothing but ride it in the rain so far. So, um, but uh, I know where he lives, he's got a lovely track near to him, which um, which was funny enough, where I had the suspension set up on the ZX7 a few years back. But I'm sure he's looking forward to the summer and getting out on the track on his. But <laughs> There's my little adjuster knobs on the Olins. Oh, look at that, it's a bit dirty. I've been holding off cleaning it actually since the ride because I knew I was going to be stuck in the house so I'm putting it off until I really need to get outside but um, yeah because here it doesn't so it doesn't wash the lube off it just gets gritty let's just see how many kilometers I've done 2378 so what's, um, what's that in mileage wise 60 1200 or about 1400 miles i should think something like that i'd love to start out but the neighbors have literally just come home i thought they'd gone out but they hadn't finish on the pretty face shall we oh actually why are you well we've got light let's see 
Let's see if we can see the radio. You see, it's just to the right of the steering damper as you're looking at it here. There's a ding there, and then the same thing just to the left there of the um, of the brake hose coming down. That radio looks like a bit, a bit of a mess as well, doesn't it? So, well, I've got a bit of a dead insect in there. All right, take care, everybody. Be safe.